All right, and welcome back to our working with uh, Excel. Uh, today we're going to be starting on Chapter 4. This is going to be broken up into four sections. Uh, first, uh, we're going to cover uh, data sets and tables in this chapter. Uh, so moving on to uh, the chapter objectives, we're going to look at dar large data sets. Uh, we're going to discover how to freeze rows and columns print large data sets. Uh, we're going to be working with some Excel tables very similar to database tables that you might have worked with in other programs. Um, so we're going to cover some of the benefits, uh, some table design, uh, using styles. Then we're going to look at some table manipulation as well as table aggregation. Uh, creating total rows, subtotal rows, um, and then applying some uh, conditional formatting uh, within the information in our table. So looking at large data sets, a lot of times uh, dealing with uh, Excel spreadsheets, you'll find that you have information within a worksheet uh, that doesn't fit on the screen or on one page when you go to print it. Uh, so we're going to look at some options where you can freeze rows, columns, or both um, so that you can have some scrollability and uh, and some visibility of your data with uh, you know without losing column headers. Um, or your row indicators on the side. So we're going to look at freeze panes, uh, freezing the top row, and then uh, freezing the first column. In addition to dealing with uh, large data sets, uh, printing data becomes uh, a little bit of an unwieldy um, endeavor sometimes with dealing with Microsoft Excel. Um, so page breaks allow you to kind of uh, format your printing, um, how you want the data to start and end on one page and then uh, begin on another. Uh, so we're going to be looking at uh, implementing some page breaks uh, and then we're going to talk about some of the uh, uh, some of the different types of page breaks. You have an automatic page break uh, which is basically the default set based on the number of cells and rows that fit on a, a specific orientation. Um, and then we're also going to look at some manual page breaks, which basically, as the user, you kind of force the end of one page to the beginning of the next page uh, based on how you want your data to be displayed, uh, as well as presented in the, uh, the printout. Um, we're also going to look at printing large data sets. We're going to look at setting and clearing some print areas. Uh, basically, your print area is your range of cells that you're going to print or that you want to print. Uh, so we're going to look at selecting and setting the print area. Um, creating print titles. So, you know, large data sets over multiple pages, you want to make sure that you have uh, your print titles. And this is basically just specifying um, your row and column headers that are going to appear on each page. Uh, and the last piece that we're going to look at in this first section is going to be controlling the print order. Uh, and essentially, the print order is the sequence in which the pages are printed. So, based on the, uh, the layout of Microsoft Excel, you'll see that. Um, your, your sequence in default for Excel, um, it prints the top left um, page in the worksheet, the bottom left, um, and then it moves over to the top right and then bottom right. Uh, so we're going to look at how we can, uh, can change that print order based on um, how your data is set up. Um, so while we uh, go ahead and look at our data set, I have here um, a worksheet that uh, is basically a housing uh, would be used for real, real estate um, in terms of uh, houses that are sold, who the selling agent is. And if you notice, we have a series of information that scrolls well off the bottom of the page or off the screen, um, and then we have some information that goes over to, to the right a little bit. Uh, but first thing I want to look at is I want to look at actually um, freezing some rows and columns so you kind of have uh, a placeholder you have the, the ability to look at that. So uh, first thing I want to do is show how we can freeze the top header or the top column. Um, you would go ahead uh, and go to go to your view tab and you'll notice you have the option to freeze panes. Um, and this gives you the option to go ahead and freeze the top row. So when we click on that option, 
we have the ability now to kind of scroll down. We don't lose our column headers. So that's freezing the top row. Uh, another option that we have with uh, freezing panes, um, you notice you have the unfreeze panes, so that basically resets the worksheet. Uh, the second option that we have for freezing panes is to freeze the first column. So what this allows you to do is maintain uh, your column or I'm sorry, freeze the row. So you would then have the ability to freeze the row and scroll across. And again, if you had more data off to the right of the worksheet, you could scroll uh, across over to the right uh, while still maintaining your row indicator, which in this case is a is a just an incremented number field. Again, we can go back in there if you want to go ahead and, and undo that. You can click the unfreeze panes. One other option I want to show where is where you can freeze both the uh, the row indicator as well as the column headers. So what you want to do is you want to select the first uh, piece of data, the first cell uh, beneath your header row and just to the right of your row indicator. Uh, click the freeze panes and then you want to just select the freeze panes um, option here. And essentially what that does now is that will freeze the top column header when we scroll down and when we scroll across it keeps um, keeps our, our row indicator uh, frozen so we can scroll across and not lose track of, of which row or uh, which row we're, we're looking at. One other thing that uh, we talked about was was page breaks um, and uh, again looking at Excel um, Excel has uh, its we've mentioned default uh, page breaks um, and those uh, those are, are set up um, to basically give a default of when uh, or where the, the data is going to finish on one page um, and, and begin on the next. So if we go to our page layout view um, we can go ahead and we can kind of take a look at what kind of breaks uh, we have here we have, we can insert a page break we can remove um, a page break uh, so in this particular uh, specific area what we want to do is is we want to actually uh, change our view we go down here notice at the bottom we have page layout we have our page break preview this is down this is the last uh, option on the uh, status bar right before um, you can zoom in or zoom out. So when we click on that page break preview, um, you'll notice it gives you an indication uh, of how the page breaks are all set up. Um, so this, in this particular instance, it's going to print the first 40 uh, rows for page one, and then move on to page two, the next 40. So those are the default based on the page layout. If we were to change our orientation from a landscape to a portrait. You'll notice now that our page break now goes down to 50 uh, rows. So again, that that default value um, that default value is going to uh, fluctuate uh, depending on what type of, of orientation that you select. So I'm going to go back to uh, our landscape orientation, and uh, let's just say for the sake of readability, I want to go ahead. And I only want to dis I want to display fewer um, rows on on this particular page. Um, and so what I want to do is is now I'm going to insert the page break for line for line 24. And now you'll notice that my page breaks are much shorter have more information, or I'm sorry, less information appearing on uh, the various pages. So again, with Excel you can specify um, without manipulating any of the data, you can go ahead and specify how many uh, rows you want to, how many rows you want to go ahead and have displayed on a given page. Again, if you want to remove that page break, you select the same cell that you selected to insert it, click remove page break, 
and it goes ahead and it actually uh, uh, sets it back to, to the default. Uh, when looking at print area, um, you can create a, a specific print area. If you don't want to print all the information, uh, let's just say you just want to uh, print the house number or your, your row indicator number, the address, city, and selling agent. You can select that data, and let's just say we only want about the first 12 or 13. Um, so you can go up here to the option of print area, click set print area, and you'll notice on your page break view now that gives you uh, visibility, it gives you an indication of what's going to appear on page one. Uh, so again, we're just selecting a small subset of the existing data, we're setting up a print area, um, and now we just, uh, when we go to print this particular page, it's only going to have um, those four columns and 14 or 15 rows um, in the uh, on the page when we go to print it. Uh, again, if you want to clear that print area, all you do is select print, print, clear print area. Make sure that you have the area selected, um, and then again, it will default uh, or revert back to the default setting for for the, the page. The last thing I want to go ahead and show. Um, is going through and doing um, changing the print order. So with Microsoft Excel, um, you have the ability uh, to go ahead and set the order in which uh, set the order in which you you actually print the pages. Uh, so again, if you go into um, your page setup and We go into our page setup. We click on the sheet tab, and again, you can select your print area. You can specify your print area. So, if you only want to print a certain uh, subset of data, uh, you can also set set the rows to re to repeat at the top, columns to repeat at the left, um, and then again, as you noticed, I mentioned before, uh, you have the down and then over option, uh, which is the default. So if we had additional pages to the right to print out, um, we could go ahead and specify, um, change it up to we want to print over and then down. We could print page to the right at the top, then over to the bottom left, then over to the bottom right. So again, uh, these are just kind of the standard uh, ways to, to tweak your display, give you the ability to, to freeze rows, columns, or both. Uh, for readability and scrollability, um, and then also um, to set page breaks, so you can specify how many rows and or columns you want to appear on a particular page, and then finally going through and changing the print order for these pages. Uh, so that concludes the first of the four, uh, first of four sections here for chapter four, um, and uh, we will continue on with our next video, uh, which will focus on uh, going over uh, tables, dealing with tables in Excel.